Nothing. So you finished the tutorial island of Kefalonia. And you want to face the wider world of Greece. But you're unhappy with your damage. And all of the builds you've looked up are for level 50 or level 70 or level 99. And they're like, just get perfect epic gear with maximum crit chance, which is great if you're at those levels. On, uh, but at these levels, there is no epic gear. Or maybe you're in one of those mid-levels. Uh, you're in the 20s or 30s, and you're looking for a way to boost your damage um, while you wait to get to the point where crit builds really start to come into their own. So what do you do in order to get damage? Well, you get a legendary step from the store. Well, actually, no. Uh, you would think that, but no. Um, if I have this fancy Ezio armor, uh, I got it at level 1 because it automatically added to my inventory when I started a new character. Uh, but even with all this fancy armor, that's still only 7% uh, assassin damage per piece. Uh, there's still only 6 pieces. There's the f um, 5 of these plus the sword. Uh, plus a club item that has assassin damage on it. Even with all of that, um, I'm still topping out at 77%. Which is not nothing. It's okay. It's not bad. Uh, but it's not enough to one-shot even, like, the upper-mid-level guys, much less mercenaries. Um, but you want an assassin build that one-shots people. You want it to deal damage. You want it to kill stuff. Uh, you want the Blade of Yumminess. And the Blade of Yumminess is great at these levels because 250% all damage is bonkers. Like, these numbers are huge for this level. Um... And the drawback, cannot use abilities, is not a huge deal, because you don't have that many abilities. Um, I've only got a handful of points, and even if I put them all in abilities, the abilities that I can unlock wouldn't be that great. I'd only have the level 1 versions of those abilities until I progress further in the story. Um, and it's very possible to play without those abilities, especially when you deal so much damage. Um, I think it especially works great as an assassin build, if you want that classic... Assassin's Creed style of sneak up on guys and one-shot them from behind. Um, you're still going to have to pay attention a little bit to the levels of the guys in the area because you're not going to be one-shotting level 50 guys or level 40 guys or even level 15 guys when you're only level 8. But, um, at least for guys at your own level, maybe one or two levels higher, you're going to be one-shotting almost everyone. So there's... There's the question then of where do I find this Blade of Yumminess? Well, it's available for sale at Blacksmiths. It will randomly show up in their inventories, um, and you can buy it. Um, but there's a problem. And that problem is uh, is that the Blade of Yumminess at a Blacksmith is really expensive relative to your level. Um, it's going to cost about 63, 64 times as much as a common item would. Uh, it's going to cost like 20-something times what a, um, a rare item would. So you're going to need a lot of money. Um, at my level, at this level where I am, which is level 8, um, I would estimate that it costs somewhere between 15 and 20k. Uh, how much it costs your, your level will vary. Um, so you're just going to need to make sure that you farm enough money before you go looking for it, because once you get it in an inventory at a blacksmith, you want to have the money to pay for it then, because if you leave, uh, there's a good chance when you come back, it will have changed, um, which would be less than ideal. So we need to earn money. How do we earn money at low levels? Well, we loot things and sell them, but if I loot things that are my level and sell them, they're not going to be worth very much. Like, rare items at my level are worth, like, maybe 100 or 150 struck me, and I don't get them that often. Uh, common items are worth like 50 or 60, maybe 65. Um, but what I can do is, is I can go to a high level area, like this one, and I can just loot weapons that are level 44 off a rack. Now that bow right there, that'll sell for like 280, more than double what the stuff I would normally pick up would sell for. And there's weapon racks all along this wall in Ashea, which is literally right across the bay. You saw me sail here while I've been talking. Um, this is great because this level, or this area's level, minimum 42, uh, maximum 46. So you'll find items between those levels from weapon racks uh, and other sources, but the weapon racks are what we're after. And that's great compared to everywhere else on the map because there's only two regions 
uh, two areas that you could go that would have items that are just a little bit higher than that, and that's Lesbos and Chios. And especially at this level, um, that's a really long trip. Uh, it's not very efficient to sail all the way over there. So we're going to sail here, and we're going to farm weapons off these weapon racks until we have enough money. Uh, how are we going to do that? We are going to use something uh, that's really great, um, a technique to get these weapon racks to respawn really, to respawn really fast, and it's called user-created stories. So we're going to go to our options, we're going to hit gameplay, we're going to turn on story creator mode so that user-created stories will appear in the world, and I have added this story here to my log uh, ahead of time, the Petrii Wall Run, which will take me along this wall and show me where all the weapon racks are that I need to loot in order to gather them, and then let me restart, and I can just do that over and over again, and every time I do that, I will get uh, more and more stuff that I can sell. Um, I have a link to that story in uh, the description. Uh, it's right here. This is the story, uh, and when you get here, you just want to kind of click this button, add to story log. Uh, if you have not logged in, it will ask you to log in, uh, with your account information and whatever. This is the official Assassin's Creed Odyssey Ubisoft site. Uh, this is part of the game. Uh, it's not hacking, it's not cheating, uh, it's not exploiting. This is just the way the game works with these user-created stories in it. Um, I was not happy with any of the stories I could find um, for this area, so I made one myself. But if you're a higher level, uh, and you can go other places on the map, uh, and farm there. There are better stories than this for higher level characters. Um, one that jumps out at me real big is this one here called Weapon Run with Leader by Dauntless Virus 4. Um, there's like four weapon racks like right here on the docks and there's like four more in a forge like right around the corner. So that's eight weapon racks and a couple guys you can kill at the forge over and over again. Uh, you'll get more loot per second there. Uh, the problem with that at this level is one, I'm not going to be able to kill level 35 guys at this level. And two, uh, level 35 items don't sell for as much as level 42 to 46 items. Um, so the stuff I find here is going to be worth a little bit more, which is going to cut down on my time. Plus, uh, this one is a lot closer. So if you're really early in the game, this one's really better. Uh, I'd say at anything 45, 50 plus, where taking out five or six guys isn't going to slow you down, um, this would be better. And you would probably want to farm that instead. But you can actually farm anywhere, and you can use any story to do it. Once you're inside the story, you can completely ignore the objectives of that story. Uh, I could use this story here, um, and I could farm whatever I wanted around that story, and it would be pretty efficient. And then I could just f either finish that story, or once I'm inside, I could just hit my quest log and restart or exit that story and keep all of the stuff that I pick up inside that story. And that would work great. Uh, but I'm going to show you this story real quick, just do a, a single run through of the story to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like, and some of the features that I built into it that makes it better than the average story for doing a weapon run. Uh, so just loot that weapon rack, uh, standing in that location will start the quests for the run, and it'll take you through and give you quest markers for each of the weapon racks along this wall, as well as some quest markers to try and help you find uh, like an optimal path to the next weapon rack location. And there's a special feature that I built in uh, to try and help out uh, characters who have, or players who have really, really fast or really, really slow load times. Um, and that is something that we're going to see up here right around the corner, where you have the option to end the story early um, if the next weapon rack is too far away. So that one's up there. It's a little bit further away than the others, plus you have to run uphill. So the first place that you can stop is that check mark right there. And if I ran there, that would finish the quest, and the story would stop. And I can either restart or exit. Um, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, there's two more weapon racks up here. Uh, and that was relatively fast. So for most people, um, I would say, especially on PC, uh, you're going to want to stop probably here, maybe the one before. Um, but there are more weapon racks if you want to stick it out. Uh, we're going to take a shortcut. Not really a shortcut, it's kind of the only path. Uh, but we're going to take this route over here uh, to get to the other section of wall on the other side of the city. And this run is particularly long. Um, so it's not really worth doing if your load times are very fast. But if your load times are really slow, um, you're probably better off running over here and grabbing the last couple of weapon racks instead of loading earlier. So I'm just going to finish that out. 
so we can see how that would go. Uh, so there's one more here. There's one more right up here in this tower. And then there's a final one right along the wall up here. And even though the wall continues all the way to the ocean, uh, there actually aren't any more weapon racks uh, until all the way at the very, very end of the wall right here. So there's one more there. This entire stretch of wall is empty. Um, and I can just go ahead and run into the check mark. And when I do that, it'll say the quest is complete. And it'll pop up this screen about how I've finished the story. And you can give it a rating if you want. And you can tag it if you want. And if you need to keep farming, you want to hit restart. And restart will just take you right back to the beginning of the story. And after that happens, uh, all of the weapon racks, when you restart, will be back. And you can just loot them all again. Uh, and you can just keep doing that until you have enough weapons in order to cover the cost of the Blade of Yumminess so that you can buy it. And if you're a higher level, uh, these items will have a better chance of being rare or epic. And you can use these farming techniques to farm money or materials to upgrade your ship, uh, to upgrade your engraving levels, anything you might need money for. Uh, you can use this technique. Uh, and it works great. And if you're wanting to farm in an area because you particularly like that area, and you d can't find a story, and you don't want to go through the trouble of building the story yourself, uh, you can always enter any story that's nearby and once you've farmed what you want to farm, instead of finishing the story by actually doing the quest, you can just come to your quests log, and you can hit this cancel story button, and you can hit cancel, and it'll skip to this screen, which is what we saw after we saw the check mark. Uh, and you can hit restart to farm again, or you can hit escape to exit the story. Uh, and the last thing that I'm going to cover is after we come out of this, we're going to head over to a blacksmith. Uh, we're going to go over a technique for finding very high quality uh, epic roles at higher levels and something that we can use if we've, we're just starting out, if we're a fresh character who's level 8 or 7 or 5 or 9 or whatever level you are uh, when you left Kefalonia to try and find that blade of yumminess, uh, which you can find at any level. Um, and this is the way I would recommend doing it. So what you want to do is you want to head to a blacksmith and there's one, there's actually two in this town, which makes it a great location if your load times are long, because you can visit two blacksmiths each time you load, uh, instead of just one. And once you get to that blacksmith, um, on PC, you can save right in front of him. Uh, it works perfectly fine. I've heard mixed results on uh, console. For doing that, sometimes you need to save from further away in order to get it to work right. Uh, we'll go into what working right looks like in a second as soon as we get over to this blacksmith. Um, so we're just going to check his inventory when we get there. Looks dangerous. After Maybe we make a save. So we want to make a save. Uh, right when that talk appears, we want to make a save right in front of him, and we're just going to talk to him, we're going to check his inventory, and we're going to make a mental note of what this inventory looks like. So there's three swords, four daggers, two rare daggers. That's just kind of some real quick, easy to notice things. A lot of times, if you go in a second time, it'll be a different inventory the second time, but then the third time it'll be the same inventory. This time we're not so lucky, it's the same inventory the second time. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and load. And after we come out of this load, we're going to do a quick check uh, to see if his inventory is changing. And if the inventory is changing every time, that's good. That's what we're looking for. We want the inventory to be different every time so that we can see different items. And every time we see that inventory come up, we're going to check for whatever item we happen to be looking for. At higher levels, maybe you're looking for that epic item with those perfect rolls. Uh, at this level, I'm level 8. Um, I'm looking for that blade of yumminess. I'm not looking for it because I got it on Kefalonia. Not something I would recommend. Check out my other video of me doing, uh, going over the technique for that. I don't think anyone should do it, but it's doable um, just to prove that it's possible. Uh, but yeah, so that's the technique. That's how you farm the money. That's how you farm the blacksmith. And we're just going to keep loading until we find the Blade of Yumminess. I'm not going to put that in the video because it's boring. Uh, but that's how you do it, uh, and that 250% damage bonus is going to get you high enough where you're going to be one-shotting guys when you get to Mega Reese. Um, and because your base damage goes up as you level for assassinations, it's going to level, uh, it's going to scale with you pretty well. 
uh, all the way into the 20s and 30s, maybe even the 40s, uh, about when you would want to think about switching to one of those crit-based, epic-based builds anyway. Um, and that's it. Uh, that's the technique. Uh, those are the two stories I would recommend for this technique. Uh, there are others. Uh, I know there's some uh, other wall runs like Thebian. Uh, there's some Athens wall run stories as well. But any story will work. Um, there's also stories like uh, this one, Kill the Enemies in Masara, where the best way to use them is to loot the nation chest that's in the fort nearby and then just leave. And then just do that over and over again. That also works. Uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, it's all the same kind of idea. You create the new instance of the game by going into a user story. You find what you want and take it. And then you leave or you restart. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Um, check out the description for links. And have a good night. Good day. Good afternoon. Wherever you are.